Greetings, everyone. P. Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to In the Prague Seed. It's Tuesday night. I've assembled the troops, and we have a little crossover tonight. Uh, special guest tonight, all the way from the Hudson Valley Squares, our Monday night show, Mr. Chris Canzanari is here. What's happening? Hey, everybody. And let's uh, introduce the rest of the crew. We've got uh, George Lemay is in the house. we got Chad Hutchinson. Our center square is Mr. Anthony Ferraro. Stephen Reed's with us. It's very late by him, but he's up all the way from Scotland. Mr. Stephen Reed, we've got Ken Golden, the professor of Prague. And also from New York, we got a few New Yorkers here tonight. We usually do anyway. Eric Porter's here. We may also see our other one in a little bit. Uh, Chuck Alvarez is, is going to be a little bit late, but we figure we get started here. So uh, tonight's topic, this is one we've been talking about doing for quite a while. Our favorite five Speaking of Chuck Alvarez, here he is as I'm announcing the uh, the topic. Our five favorite prog album covers, right? And progressive rock and fusion and prog metal has a history of having some pretty outlandish but pretty cool album cover art. So this was not easy, although, you know, we could probably do this episode every other week and come up with different ones all the time. I think there's so many good ones. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how much crossover we have tonight as far as like people duplicating picks i'm sure it might happen or we might have artist duplication right which is totally okay and we'll see what's going on there he is chuck alvarez is here what's happening chuck greetings and good after good evening forgive me good evening chuck, do you have your album pick <laughs> yes i do we'll get to that at the end of the episode eh? <laughs> and he's chopping yeah, the bit and then he's gonna be like oh yeah i don't know that album i'm not gonna <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all waiting for the shoe to draw. <laughs> yeah, figure what's another hour, right, Jeff? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Or the boot to drop. <laughs> so no, I think uh, we each got five just, picks. And I think you we'll are all going to like this one. <laughs> oh, good. Well, I hope so. So uh, mm -hmm. for, for those of you who wonder what the hell we're talking about, so we've been doing these album studies, right? It is Chuck's turn to pick the album. So at the end of this episode, he will reveal what we're going to be talking about on the next episode. We don't know. Nobody knows. We've been bugging him all week, so uh, we're looking forward to finding out. So Even Chuck doesn't know. Right at the end, he'll make his major <laughs> announcement. So with all that being said, we got five picks, five album covers here that we really like. And uh, we'll do two picks per person for each round. So we'll go two, two, and one. And uh, we'll have our special guest join us, who's joining us tonight, Mr. Canzanari, uh, kick us off with his first two choices. So, Hey, Chris. Hey, Chuck. Okay. Um, some of my picks might be a little basic. I dipped into my own collection. You know, I like the normal amount of prog, like that a normal person likes. So <laughs> you guys are probably like, oh, you know, whatever. But, you know, and I could have just whipped out every Roger Dean cover and, and gone with that. But, you know, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I dug deep for me. But uh, I'm going to start out with Roger Dean. Relayer by Yes. You know, you got a couple of elves here taking a little ride through these mountain crags. You know, it's pretty cool. Um, looks, almost looks like there's windows up in here. You know, it's like people living in these crazy ass freaking mountain dwellings or something. I don't know. And you got two fucking snakes. Nice one. But uh, I like this one. You know, it's a little less colorful than Roger's normal stuff. Very cold, you know, very cold mountain winter kind of thing going on. So this has always been a favorite relayer. Yes. That's my first one. Great pick. Second one. This one's almost for like technology purposes, but I'm gonna go. Oh, yeah. well, I love it. In mm -hmm. pre, you know, Photoshop times, you know, somebody cut up a bunch of negatives and rearranged each guy in each picture and blah 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 all the way down. And then you get two two covers for the price of one because Saucer Full of Secrets is hanging out down in here. Mm-hmm. But uh, I was impressed with this way back when, and I still am. I think this is an awful lot of labor. Looks cool. I don't really love the album, but hey. <laughs> Umaguma and number two. Is that a British pressing? Well, uh, it's Harvest Records, I think. Yeah, that's person pressing, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. But yeah, she's beautiful. That's an inspired choice. I didn't even think about that one. It was very cool. Very cool. That's why I invited him, Pete. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, he knew. All right. Uh, let's go all the way over to Scotland. Mr. Reed, what are your first two picks? Okay, so I've gone for something quite recent for my first pick. I've gone for, I've done this to myself because I hate the title of this album. This is The Theory of Molecular Inheritance. Okay, this is by Arena. So the artist here is David Wyatt. 
He also did the artwork on the Contagion album and EPs. Uh, he's probably better known for working with people like Philip Pullman, Terry Pratchett. His work was in 2000 AD early on. I just love the colours. It also conveys, it's a concept album, it conveys the concept really well. The guy is here and he's kind of not here. It's all about trying to move DNA around and can you be somebody else if you change things in your molecular makeup and all this kind of stuff. And I'm a sucker for an album that goes all the way around. And in these modern days where idiots like me pay <clears throat> a small fortune for these booklets, booklets are ginormous, I do like that the art continues on inside the whole thing is continues on with the concept. Love it. So that's my first one. Show us the thickness of that one, Stephen. It's not one of the biggest ones. There you go. It's, <laughs> it's nice. It's nice. And it is nice all the way through. It doesn't matter where you delve in. It's cool as anything. We, don't like, we know Kent likes girth, so. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> talked about it all day. He talked about it all day. Unfortunately. Mm. <laughs> right for what's to come. Uh -oh. Bad choice of words. Anyway, okay. So my second choice is slightly different. I have gone for Letters Tomorrow by Frequency Drift. Okay, and unfortunately, I'm not going to probably get a really good image of this because it's on CD. This is a photograph, okay, by Christian Silong, excuse my pronunciation, uh, with a Japanese model in it called Nanako Yoshino. I love this cover because it's just, it's full of mystery, it's full of intrigue. As the album is too, there's immediately, there's choices on which way to go. You can't really pick it up here, but the model is holding uh, an umbrella that you can see through. There's lights coming through there and all these various things. And there's another reason that I like this, and I like it because it reminds me very much of the photography of a guy called Liam Wong. This is his book, Tokyo. And the themes are very, very similar. Okay, this is a guy, he's from Scotland in actual fact, but he spends an awful lot of his time just going around places like Tokyo, taking pictures at night and... His images are just absolutely phenomenal. The light is amazing, and it just captures a mood and an atmosphere. And he also has a... I'll show you this one, because I love this one. I just love some of these images. It immediately takes you to places that you'd like to be. You'd love to be in these photographs, do you know? But he's similar in the sense that he loves to have characters in the foreground with an awful lot of imagery in the background that asks you lots of questions. And he also, funnily enough, and I'm sure this is all coincidence, absolutely loves to play around with umbrellas. Because this is just an umbrella in the rain, which is not going to come through very well in this. Mm, just with all these colours, and, and it's just beautiful. So the album kind of has the same sort of mood and feel, so it's a slightly off on a tangent because I'm talking about something else entirely. But it feels like it belongs. These imagery... So it's very similar, and I just love it. I really like some photography as well as some of the great artwork that we get. So that's my first two. Cool. That's different. Nice. Yeah. Chuck. Hey, good evening, gentlemen. Sorry for being a little late there, but we'll, that's for another time. Anyway, my first pick um, will make a, a Mr. Chad will be here happy. Roxy Music's first album. Oh, yeah, my favorite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's it? That's um. What's it from their first album, their eponymously um named first album from 1972. Um, I forgot the um young lady's name on there, and so but she was featured on a couple of other albums as well. My second one also is um quite famous for an artist that just passed away recently, and so Miles Davis's Live Evil. What's that? Um, I was trying to look for the actual CD itself. You know, if anyone knows, I just usually just make copies of um of the album covers. But the inside has a very interesting um gatefold. I don't know if you've ever seen it, and so the gatefold to this album is quite interesting. Um, this is Miles Davis's Live View. That's my second pick. It's uh, Matty Clarwin. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, he passed away. I think what two years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Well, no, last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he died last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great artwork on there. That whole album. Is, oh yeah, mm -hmm. stuff with Santana as well. Yep, yep. Yeah, he did Abraxas and uh, mm -hmm. and um the the live album. Moonflower is that Moonflower? No, mm -hmm. no, no, he, no, he did the, he did the, he did the live album. Abraxas and the live album. 
And I think didn't he Lotus, also Lotus. Ken didn't he also work with uh, Santana's brothers? Did Malo? Didn't he also do a Malo album? I don't know. I got to be honest. I don't know. Yeah, I, I have I have in my stack. I have some Eddie Clark one here. So okay, cool. We'll show off some stuff in a bit. Awesome. All right, Eric. Ah, so I thought this was cool because I think, and I don't want to generalize and say everyone is the same age but we all grew up i think with albums i know i had albums mm -hmm. for years and so what i tried to think about is when i was a kid i mean stuff like you know boston uh i thought both of those covers were great uh ken will love this one i stared at this for hours when i was <laughs> uh, with, with a box of kleenex I'm right? sure. <laughs> like, <laughs> like counting the cod pieces all those things were so cool to me. And and we didn't have the internet. You couldn't go out and read about these bands or look at them. So you looked at album covers all the time, right? So unfortunately, our guest tonight, Mr. Canizari, stole my first one, um, which was Relayer, uh, Roger Dean. But I'll, I'll grab that one. I'm a little discombobulated here and hold that up. But my second one, this is a band um, that I heard about through Marillion. And... It's uh, Palace the Sentinel, mm -hmm. and I got that years ago. And obviously, back then we always talk about how now we check stuff out before we buy it. The only reason I bought this was because I thought the cover was awesome, and I read about them because of Marillion. There was an association. Uh, I can't say I'm the biggest fan of theirs, but I th I think this is a fantastic cover. So, uh, Relayer and Palace the Sentinel are my first two. Cool. Mm -hmm. Ben. Ah. Me. So uh, me, cover art is very important. As, as a label owner, I used to tell my bands that an attractive cover is what's going to have the customer just take it out of the bins. You know, why Why is somebody going to grab something out of the bins? It, it's the cover art, right? So uh, it, for me, as a consumer and as a label owner, it's always been very, very important. And if you've been to my house, you know I collect art, and I have a strong affinity for surrealist art and pop surrealism and classic surrealism, and you'll see that in everything that I'm going to hold up. So I'm going right to my number one, and this is to be expected, my favorite artist of all time, H.R. Giger, who did brain salad surgery, and... The woman inside was his life mate until she committed suicide in 1975, Lee Tobler. And uh, the band met him in 1973 when they were playing in Switzerland and they loved his work. And he created this for them. Now, originally, this was m much more phallic and mm -hmm. the record label had, I don't know if you can see it, but they... They basically, it was basically like a, it was basically a penis and, and yep. they had, the label had, uh, I think another artist actually came in and airbrushed it and made it into uh, light. And uh, just because I'm playing by my own rules tonight, Pete, I, sorry. So here's another piece. Here's another piece by Giger. Uh, Island and Pictures. I released this on CD a number of years ago and uh, I actually met Giger in Zurich in around 1991, 1992, uh, to talk about a, another project that I was interested in uh, releasing. And he was, without question, the most intense man I've ever met in my life. Very friendly, but there was something about him. He was exactly what you would expect him to be. You know, he was, he was wearing a long black leather trench coat with black boots, <laughs> black pants, black shirt. But and and he is all gray hair and just did he, um, did he look his, like Robert Smith? Man, no, I mean his hair wasn't like crazy, you know. I mean not like Robert Smith. He was no mascara like Robert Smith. <laughs> but uh, you know, but he there was mm. there was an a, a real intensity, actual intensity about him. Like when he gave me his phone number, he wrote it on the back of my business card, and he went over every letter like two three times. You know, it's like it's kind of kind of crazy. Anyway. Giger's my my all time favorite artist and uh, and very very important to me. Next guy is kind of obvious is the, probably the most iconic cover artist Roger Dean for progressive music and I picked 
we could have picked any of any of Rogers' pieces. Uh, I tend to actually like his figurative work more than just his straight landscapes. And uh, you know, I, 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 I mean, is Uriah Heep Prague? Eh, maybe, maybe not. But you know, I always liked this cover. I think this is one of the greats. You can't, you can't pick a bad Roger Dean cover. Some are just a little bit more interesting than the others. And as I said, I tend to like his figurative work. So. That's, those are my two, Giger Ooh. and Roger Dean. Uh, yeah, but, you picked, but you held up three albums. Yeah, I don't give a shit, man. I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want tonight. And wow. You're gonna like it. And you're going to like it. <laughs> you're going to hey. love it. Hey, hey, Ted, don't you tell people who usually say that to get their own YouTube channel? Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, Anthony's feisty tonight. Holy cow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was. All right, Chad. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start off iconic. I'm going to go with one of the classic bands. And we're going to go King Crimson, Lark Songs and Aspect. Uh, you know, it's very, it's relatively simple, clean lines, the moon and the sun, uh, uh, you know, incorporated together there. Um, great on a shirt, great on an album cover. It's just, it's iconic. I, I, what else do you think of but King Crimson, if, if you're in the know? Uh, do you think then, then that? That's, it's just... Very simple, very cool cover. Always loved it. Really um, and number four, and this was this. By the way, this was hard. Uh, there's just lots of good art out, art out there. My number four is a newer album, 2021, and that's the Amorphous Androgynous oh, featuring nice. the Mammal. That's a good one. Now, now we know that's similar to Eloy, but I like this one a little bit better. I would uh, agree. The, the the face is a little more anguished. You've got the, I guess it's like a, a, a giant squid coming out of the mouth and there's the ship in the water. It's very tumultuous. Um, the green hue just gives it an eerie feeling. It's just a really dynamic painting. I just, from the moment I saw it, I thought it was fantastic. So there's my one and two. King That's Crimson and Amorphous Androgynous. That's that, probably my that favorite album. Peter cover. Hamill? Yeah. Yes. Does great. he sing a lot on that? Um... Yeah, that's okay. fun, but you know, it's not, it's not the sort of the, the angry angular Peter Hamill. Okay. It's really like a space rock pink fluidish kind of thing with his vocals sort of like fading in and out. If, I mean, if you like, I mean, I knew you, I knew you like space rock and Floyd. I, you're a Vandegraaff fan too, aren't you? Sometimes. Somewhat. I think you'd be okay with this. He, he doesn't dominate, he doesn't dominate the, no. the not at all. There's a lot of recurring themes and stuff. It's a really cool album. It's, it's really, really very really kind good. of orchestrated also. It's it's really nice. Yeah, yeah it's really, really good. Spacey. It's good. Yeah. yeah. That's probably the greatest album cover of the last decade. It's really great. Amazing. Yeah. Really and when you see it, yeah, the, and I hate to say the LP is much more impressive than the CD. <laughs> For sure. Is what right. it is. That's number four. Cool. George. Uh I guess what I found interesting about this exercise was uh, noting how simple I am. I, I'm not a big art, art aficionado. So for me, it's like, wow, cool colors, basically. Uh, <laughs> just down to brass tacks. Um, so 90125, is that your favorite? This one is connected to something anyway. Symphony Love X, it. There you go. Love it. Mm -hmm. Good one. Uh, connected, obviously, to the title track, which is... Uh, a literary piece that you know most of the people have probably read if you read anything at all i think it uh byron's on here i mean i just think it turned out really good and i when i listen to that the song i always visualize this so good one read another one from atlanta last sit on oh yeah is it best. For, their best i usually don't go for the digital stuff but uh, something about this one. I always liked it. Composition. The other thing I noticed too is it, it helps if the font is good. Like a stupid font kind of just takes it down a notch. 100%. And the font on this is great. So, yeah, the best song. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Solid. Check this guy. I also like the Leviathan cover too. Yeah, they got a few. Yeah. yeah. Anthony. All right, Ken, you're going to be impressed. I got all, all LPs for you. <laughs> Because that's what the cover art's for. That's now, right. my number five is kind of basic, uh, but I think the scene is kind of cool. It looks like they're 
in the recording or the looks like they're behind the recording studio in a winter scene. So I'm going with my number five. I'm going with uh, David Gilmore's self-titled from 1978 uh, with he and his, his band. Uh, I forget who the drummer was, but Rick Wills, future foreigner member, played bass on the record. Uh, it's nothing. It's just, you know, three guys in a winter scene out by the recording studio. I've always been kind of enamored by the pick. I always thought it was really cool. And plus, it's one of my favorite albums. So I, I think this is a really cool scene. Anthony Willie five. Wilcox, right? What's that? Willie Wilcox, I think, is a drummer on that. Oh, yeah. He played with Utopia, right? Yep. yep. Uh, yep. I think so, yes. Yep. I, I tortured Willie Wilcox. I, I went to see uh, uh, Emo Phillips at Caroline's. And uh, Willie Wilcox was sitting at my table, and I just tortured him the whole night. I was asking him the dumbest questions, like, <laughs> like, like Willie, what do you do with the pyramid? You know, what do you do with the giant pyramid? <laughs> he's like, leave me alone, man. I don't know what happened. Yeah, right? He's <laughs> like, he's sitting there, he's watch you know what, Ken? He's he's sitting talking to buddies tonight, going, I was I was sitting with some asshole at this absolutely concert. <laughs> was absolutely was. Oh, this guy was killing me the whole night. All he wanted to talk about was utopia. I don't know how you sit through a whole hour of emo Phillips. Bingo. Uh, my number four. Uh, I've always been kind of enamored with, with this cover. Uh, I have bad lighting tonight. Genesis, Wind and Wuthering. You know, some of the songs in here kind of uh, embody like the peaceful feeling with a tree out in the middle of a meadow with with no other trees around. It's just very peaceful and and kind of kind of get like a windy kind of uh, scene from it. So that's my number four is Wind and Wuthering. Another a, fantastic another album. Time. That's another conveys nice the mood of the album, album Anthony, too. Don't what's, you think? What's that? Conveys the mood of the album, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, when I look at that cover, I think of Blood on the Rooftops. Yep. Yep. Sure. All right. My number five is Fly by Night. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's a cool one. Mm -hmm. Love the owl. I love owls anyway. This is so cool. It's, you know, just the whole snowy thing. You got Bytor and the Snow Dog, right? I mean, the, to me, the songs, the lyrics convey what the cover is all about just always loved it and that's drawn by a guy named Araldo Carugati whoever the hell that is all right <laughs> uh, I'm going to stick with the same type of color palette here my number four is Ocean by Elo oh yeah nice fantastic I mean this is just uh let's 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 look at the whole thing right and granted the LP I'm sure looks way better but look at that Ken do you have that on LP it's right here of course it is <laughs> <laughs> I actually really like the Ocean 2 cover as well. Mm -hmm. That's very good as well. Yeah. yeah. A lot of their covers are great for you. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Very cool. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Pete, that's oh. such a great album. It is, even though I like Silent Cries a little bit better, but uh, this, this is the better cover. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Silent Cries is, cool is a too. great cover, but this is the better cover. This amazing cover. Yeah. Exactly. Daughter of Earth. Daughter of Earth. <laughs> All right, Chris. Okay, this is an album I never would have owned if Alan Holdsworth didn't play guitar on it. Uh, and that I'm only just starting to get into now. But uh, this CD oh, yes. from, uh, from Soft Machine Bundles. has this cover. I, this is just such a very English scene. You know, you got a hedgerow in the back there and you got maybe this is a thatched roof cottage and this guy went out for a picnic and he decided to, you know, let this bird go instead of eating it. You know, it's pretty cool. Um, this is, I think I said Reg Cartwright is the guy who painted this. He's still active. You can go on his website and actually buy this guy's art. I didn't price any of it, but uh, it's out there if you want to get some. Um, but yeah, I love this album and I love this little scene, you know, this little dude, he's like the guy from Remains of the Day, you know, he's off on a, you know, he got out of the freaking manor house or whatever he's pigeon racing or whatever he's doing so bundle soft machine that could be the other side of the hedgerow from selling england by the pound you know i thought <laughs> i thought that myself too like there's some guy sleeping on the other side i think he's drunk so this next one <laughs> this reproduction is terrible so i don't know if it's going to show up here at all this is hatfield in the north yes their <laughs> debut album if you just glance at this cover, you're like, okay, and man, this lighting is so terrible, and this cover is terrible as well. But, you know, there's a few houses, and there's a sort of a plane back there, and I did a little research, and these houses are actually in Reykjavik, Iceland. And, you know, I was like, oh, Reykjavik, everybody loves Iceland, wants to go there, it's supposed to be such a cool place. But then if you look up in the sky, 
there are tortured souls writhing in agony in hell all mm. throughout the sky. <laughs> now, when I first yeah. saw this, when I first saw this, I saw a lot of butts and boobies and stuff, and I'm like, they're having an orgy, bro. Like, <laughs> no, no. This is actually a <laughs> half of a fresco by an artist called Luca Signorelli, who was, uh, I think, a 14th or 15th century guy. And if you actually check out the fresco itself, it's it's really it's obvious it's hell. You know, there's people throwing spears down on them. Half these people are like all decomposed <laughs> and shit. You know, but I love this. You know, it's like this little scene in this little town, and you're like, oh yeah, off in the plane. You know, there's what's waiting for you. Hey, because all the shit you did. So, well, me at least. You know, you guys are probably going to heaven. I don't know. But yeah, <laughs> at Field of the North. Oh. Oh, Chris, bring <laughs> Chris, bring oh, Christian, are you are you the the bundles album is that the only album you have with Holdsworth? Are you really starting to go into the one him as a as a uh, what do I want to say as a uh, guitar player? Not a guitar player, but a um, <laughs> side man. Like, have you have you uh, heard one of a kind yet? I have IOU or no um Metal Fatigue. I bought when I was a kid. That was his band. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure I have a UK album sitting around here somewhere. I mean, I've been Jump. aware of it. But really, it's Soft Machine that I'm sort of wrapping Check, it, check out Bruford, one of a kind. That's okay. maybe his finest hour. No, check out Tony Williams' Lifetime. Believe it. <laughs> well, that's good, too. Check out Jean Lupani and heard... Atlantic Ocean. We can go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. we, we've we've oh. long said... Uh, my dog agrees, too. We've long said that... Um, some of his best playing is on when he's guesting on other people's albums. And that's, mm -hmm. that's one of my favorites. I think bundles is terrific. I think he's amazing. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right, Steven, I'm going to turn it over to you and uh, I'm going to go let my dog out. So I'll be back in a minute guys, but carry on. Okay. So I am uh, moving things around because I don't really have one to five and all this kind of stuff. And Eric's already chosen one of the, the five that I chose to go with. So yes, this yes. is the Sentinel by Palace from 1984. The artist is a guy called Patrick Woodruff, also did cover up for Greenslade and Strobes, mm. Budgie, Stratavarius, strangely enough, mm. and also did Sad Winter Destiny cover for mm. Judas Priest, which is a fantastic yes. cover. And as I've said, I do love an album that allows you to do all this. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. The inside gate for logo. They didn't stick with the logo. Stick with the logo. All bands. <laughs> yeah, stick with the exactly. logo. Okay. I got ripped yeah. off, Stephen. I don't have the gatefold. You don't have the gatefold? Oh, no. you see, because that's another reason I chose it, because it, it's yeah. got fantastic it's script inside, you know? It continues on the journey. You can just feel what this is out. You can't read a word of it. Look, it's totally illegible. But that doesn't matter, because it feels like it belongs. There's loads going on. I mean, there's crazy kind of dove hand bird things flying up here that seem to have nothing to do with the main kind of piece. But I love it. It's all these really fancy ships and all these kind of things. Beautiful. So that's my next choice. Um, and as I say, I'm moving things around. Now, don't give me a hard time, Anthony, because I'm about to hold up too. Okay. But they, they, they are themed. Okay, they are themed. So this it is, Script Registers Tier. And of course, Fugazi. So this is Marillion, mm -hmm. it's Mark Wilkinson, it's album one and two. And really, there's a story being told between the two because this is, you know, the the minstrel trying to work out his music and his bed set, he's down in his luck. You've got, you know, there's although it's got writing on the back and things, you've got single covers up on the on the wall and all these kind of things. And then by the time they get to album number two. Well, he's making some money. He's in a modern apartment. It's all began to happen. But look at this. You know, he's bought the lifestyle. It's not going as well as it should do. But same again, you've got, you know, Hans coming out of the television and all this sort of stuff. So I love Mark Wilkinson. He's done some great work with Judas Priest and, and Iron Maiden. He's worked with Fish since he split with Marillion and he did all the early Marillion stuff. But I think that really probably these remain the iconic too. So that's my next choice. I knew I could count on you to do Marillion. That's why I left it up to you, my friend. Well, that's why I'm, I, I did have them as last, but I thought nobody else has chosen them yet. I'm going to get in now. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. Good call. All right, Chuck. All right, my number three 
Oh, what's it? It's a band that we barely ever talk about over here. And so I know I won't be choosing them for our album study. Um, ELO's first um, album, No Answer. You know, I always love this cover. It's a very odd cover where it's just a light bulb in the middle of a room. Uh, looks like a library. Um, and what's it? That's always been a, a fantastic album for me. And so I always love this album cover. And then my number two. Um, what's a, it's always been one of my favorite um album covers. And search of space, Hawkwind. Mm -hmm. You know what's a, that? This is um what's a, one of these colorful albums? You know, um, just like it's another space album that these guys um have always been known for. It's always been one of my favorite albums, but this one happens to be my favorite album of all time from these guys. Mm -hmm. All the Mountain Girl is a great cover too. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, Chuck, the with with the the vinyl of the Hawkwind, uh, it's it's a die cut from the center, and it falls yes. out. I, I have the actual album cover, something the album somewhere in my closet. So, but I do have the album cover for that. I want to know what else is in Chuck's closet. <laughs> it's stuff I can't get to. <laughs> <laughs> one of these, oh, you'll come out of the closet one day. <laughs> oh, someday soon. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> you know, there's, a new, there's a new version of uh, Space Ritual that's out. Mm -hmm. I love that. Album. How many? Uh, how many uh, discs is in that? I, I got. I have them on the way. They shipped out today. I'll is have them the ten, the like ten or something, something like, like that. This, something crazy. There's like two or three different versions. I don't know. I ordered them all. So. Oof, man, more Hawkwind than you'll ever need, right? Oh no, Hawkwind, you can never get enough. Man. I know, especially I if they're old. <laughs> But that's the prime period. That's what you want. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep, for sure. The Lemmy days. Yep. All right. Uh, where are we? Eric. All right. So I'm just showing because I dropped the ball on the last one and Christian already showed it, but I had to show Relayer. Um, so my wife gave me crap for this one, but this was one where the I was showing her my five and she's like, no, that's not. But this <laughs> image always stuck with me. So uh, I'm going with Passport. Uh, nice. I like that a lot. I, yeah. I like the back cover too, actually, just as much. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the album, but I don't know. It's just an image that once I saw it, it's you know, it's always there. If I think of passport, this is the album. Hold I think. up a little closer there, Eric. Hold it up closer. Yeah, show the back. Show the back mm -hmm. again too. That reminds me a little bit of the Buggles cover, the broken and glasses. I, oh yeah, yes. Eric, Eric. I had I had those passport albums in my stack originally. They're just oh. yeah I, yeah those covers it's the same artist I don't know who would mm -hmm. yeah I, know I just I I didn't do my homework like you guys on the artist but um it had some like corporation art company or something that was listed on the disc yeah. and it's great this one I just love her work um Kim Poor Steve Hackett Spectral Mornings um there's a lot of other covers she's done I've gone out and looked at her artwork. But I just think she's fantastic. This is another one where I just think it kind of conveys the mood of at least the song Spectral Mornings. I don't know why, but I just think she captures something about Steve in this picture. So and, uh, that's and Eric. Too. She was kind of a hottie back in the day, too. She was very hot. Yeah, yeah very, she was a hottie. Very. He did well for himself, at least early on. <laughs> Until she cheated on him with his man. <laughs> All right. That's another day. Another day. <laughs> Cool, good picks, Ken. Well, you know these covers are supposed to convey some kind of a some kind of a feeling, at least some kind of reaction from you. I think, and I'm not sure what reaction you're supposed to get from this, but <laughs> this is Dijon, Electric Silence. The artist is Helmut Wensk, and he did a, he did a lot of work for the Belafonte label. He was basically like the in-house uh, designer graphic designer and artist and he also did this they may be from oh nectar tab in the ocean so uh <laughs> yeah he's great he's i mean Wentz's work i mean i think it's brilliant and it fits with my aesthetic of like really fucked up cover art you know and i think i think he's i think he's great so that's kind of a goofy cover <laughs> yeah and and I, are you guys familiar with the band no, yeah, no. i know that cover i've never heard them I remember you talking about them during, when we did. It's uh, kind of like, like kind of like ethnic psychedelic jazz rock. You know, it's it's they're pretty crazy, and it's <laughs> great, great shit. 
so and my next one well of course was was Eloy so that we uh that we just talked about uh, yeah that's we're doing two and two right yep yep cool. pretty good that was three picks three or four picks from uh Ken without a phallus it's pretty good no, it's oh, there's more coming. Don't worry. Yeah, hang on, Chad. Hang more, on. You know, Chad, you know. Chad there's, there's more penis coming. Don't worry. Oh, I know. I, I know. Don't even worry. Be, oh, we don't, all can't wait. You'll 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 get you'll get your full of penis. Wow. <laughs> Good night, everybody. See you next time. <laughs> all right, Chad, go for it. All right. Um, again, a newer band. When I first saw this cover, it it was striking, and um. George, if you like color, this is a, this is a cover for you. Norwegian band called Moron Police. It's their out their 2019 album called A Boat on the Sea. There's a um it, it's full of amazingly colored and designed animals. Uh you could stare at this cover for probably about a half an hour and still not find all the creatures. And this guy's artwork, his name's Antonio Segura Donat. And he goes by the by the name Dulk, D-U-L-K. And all of his artwork is this really amazing illustrator vector art stuff with crazy, with amazing use of color, uh, semi-surrealistic semi surrealistic animals. It's just phenomenal. I mean, it, I would take a wall-sized poster of this. I just think it's a phenomenally uh, designed cover. Really beautiful stuff. Um, yeah, did, Chad, did they ever put out a CD? They did. I have this one on CD. I thought it was, for some reason, I thought it was digital only. Originally it was, but I was able to get this. I think it's a Japanese release. Okay. But yeah, a lot of their stuff's digital. But uh, um, I'm trying to think of the name of this, this song. That's that uh, Captain Captain Awkward? Is that right? It's really off-kilter and an incredible song. And it's the one, basically, that uh, that attracted me to buy the album. Sorry, I'm just looking for it real quick. Question, Chad. Um, what would yeah. you describe them as? Uh, there's definitely a pop influence. Uh, yeah, Captain Awkward. Uh, check out the video on YouTube. Um, there's definitely a pop influence. Um, there is. Oh, geez. I mean, there's definitely it's, it's sort of a pop prog kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of good vocals. The instrumentation's really good. Uh, there does seem to be a little bit of a religious maybe christian leaning to some of the lyrics they're a little they're definitely um a little ambiguous but also every once in a while they'll sing a line you're like oh, what what was that um <laughs> but it's something i can get past it's not that big of a deal but um highly recommend captain awkward it's it'll have some twists and turns in it that you will not expect it's a great song um so that's my number three Number four, we're going to go cold again, and I'm going to go uh, go with Grace Under Pressure. I just always love the feeling of this album cover. You know, a lot of Hugh Simon stuff for Rush was great, but uh, I just love the tension between the water and the stormy sky and that eerie eye. You know, I guess the the figure on the left is supposed to relate to maybe the body electric, the song. Um, mm -hmm. Got the little P, P over G logo on the right. Uh, the water is even spilling out a little bit, a little bit of a, a breaking the fourth wall kind of thing um but always just like the cover the the colors and the, the tension that this that this showed so along with things like relayer and wind and weathering another cold but really striking album cover i love that album cover i love that album yeah great album so there's number two pete you're still muted sorry guys george you're up <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, like, why is George ignoring me? <laughs> Next one is uh, mom. Great choice. Enigmatic calling. Uh, this, uh, their lyrics on this are: they believe in all that uh, ancient alien stuff that uh, the human race is uh, seeded by aliens, and they're into all that. So that's what this is about. This bad bitch is they call her the goddess. It was supposedly the, there's a photography credit for her, so they must have photographed her and then put her in this. I'm not quite sure how they did it. And the interesting thing about this one is it's a guy in the band, uh, the singer Nils Rue. He did this cover art. So, and they, all their art is pretty. They're into the except for the last one, which is red. They're into the blue shades. Yeah. All the early ones are in the blues. 
My number two, Psychotic Waltz. Wow. A Social Grace. This is a guy named Mike Clift. I've never seen him do anything but their stuff. But uh, all all their records look really cool. I think maybe Travis Smith did their last one, but uh, the early stuff is all Mike Clift. Real, real stoner, strange, weird stuff happening. Arms growing everywhere. Sword <laughs> swallowing. I mean, this one's <laughs> definite psych vibe. I thought it was cool. So psychotic walls. Yeah, most of their album covers are pretty freaky. Very cool. Anthony. All right, my number. Uh, what do we got here? Five, four. My number three is. Uh, I could have picked maybe his debut, but I think this is really cool. I've always loved the cover of this, and of course, I bought the album before with, without even hearing a note because I love the cover so much. So I'm going with uh, Anthony Phillips. Uh, Private Parts and Pieces Part Two, Back to the Pavilion. You know, it's kind of his, his music's very pastoral, and you got uh, wind up toys kind of out in the middle of a forest, and this, this cover's just always caught my eye. And you know, and a lot of his covers usually embody his music embodies the covers because it's very pastoral and majestic. So that's my number. No, three. that up my like. My my number two is on in honor of Luis. Too bad he's not here. Uh, I mean, come on. <laughs> come on. I mean, this is just, it's insane. Elias of Sunhill. I mean, this the whole story. And this is just the music, the album, the cover art. It's just, it's primo. It's fantastic. Number two, John Anderson, Elias of Sunhill. I can't wait till his comment on the video. Once again. Oh, I know. <laughs> nice cover, though. It is. It is. It is. Yeah. yeah, it is. All right, my number three, right? Yeah, number three is a uh, cover designed by a guy named Peter Lloyd. Carry on, Wayward Son, but it's Point and No Return by Kansas. And there you have the back cover, really cool. And in fact, even the inside is really neat. You know, it's kind of set up like a very cool this whole album is just and and again it just perfectly for me when you look at the cover art it just totally tells them the kind of music you're going to hear on the inside so hey, you gotta love stuff. the kansas's font pete i know i know it's amazing i was I almost like left over here but i was like mm, i kind of i kind of like this one better i kind of this one's kind of my favorite but you know song for america's killer cover as well and yeah a lot of the, the, early serpents are, the serpents around the outside of that, I thought it was real. I always thought that was cool. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, because it's like, yeah, it's it, it almost makes you think like there's this other world outside of what's going on here, right? Which I think yeah, is really going cool. off the edge of the earth. Yeah, exactly. Very, very cool. For all you flat earthers out there. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, it wouldn't be a top five without a little Roger Dean, right? And like, Ken said, you can basically choose any. Uh, I'm going to go with Octopus. Oh, I that's a good one. thought about that. I originally had Octopus. I mean, that's glorious. That's yep. glorious. You know, this is okay. Yeah. This is that glorious. Is awesome. <laughs> the waves um, and the colors in that, so cool. Yeah, it's it's really cool. I mean, I have I have a T-shirt of this, and I, I remember the last time I saw Roger was at a was at a Yes concert, and he was doing like his little art thing outside, and and I came walking up and I went to say hello because I hadn't seen him since uh, like near Fest days, and he, yeah, I'm talking and we're catching up, and all he wants to do is talk about the shirt I'm wearing. He goes, you know, that's like one of my all time favorite prints that I ever did. I'm like, oh, I agree, I love it. So, yeah, that's my number two. And, you uh, know, Pete, it's funny. I, a friend of mine was at the uh, Phillies. Uh, no, I don't, he wasn't even in Philly. He went to the Yes show last week and he wore his Nearfest 2001 shirt with uh, the, I guess, like the dragonfly thing. Yep, that's a great first one. one he yep. did for us. And um, he, he went up to say hi to Roger, and all Roger wanted to do was talk about the shirt, which was cool. And he, during his presentation, he showed some of the Nearfest logos. Ah, how cool is that? Yeah. yeah. I still have my 2001 shirt. It's not white anymore. It's like this weird, like, kind of pinkish red because it's, it's <laughs> but, but it's like, you know, it's still in one piece. I almost never wear it anymore, but I, I still I've have got it. A, I've got a quilt in the other room that's made out of all the T-shirts. Nice. Oh, really? How awesome yeah. is that? That's very cool. Pete, what size, what size do you need? Channel sell you one. Yeah, sure. We can recreate them. What the hell? Yeah, large. Nice. <laughs> 
They're one hundred fifty three dollars and ninety nine cents. Well, I don't think I needed that bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to Mister Cans for his number one. Okay, my number one. This is probably one of the first album covers I ever actually remember seeing in my life. Uh, I was visiting some much older cousins of mine, and I think I was probably in first grade. And they're like, "What kind of groups do you like?" And I was like, "I don't know." <laughs> showing me some records or whatever and the youngest brother his favorite band was genesis and he showed me this and i was like hmm this looks pretty cool you know who's mm -hmm. that girl oh why is she swinging that thing you know oh, at wow. me why is she... oh look the balls are actually severed heads <laughs> oh, freaked me out when i was a kid but uh I asked him if I could have it. He said no, but his brother gave me a Steppenwolf album that probably went a lot further along, you know, shaping my tastes for the future. You know, if I had gotten this instead, I might have gone in a different direction. But this is by Paul Whitehead. Uh, I read a little story. They, I guess they rubbed honey all over the original painting to make it appear older. And then when Chrysalis Records got bought out, somebody who worked in the office there stole the original. So really? it's out there somewhere. You know, some uh, some accountant or secretary or somebody has got it stashed away, or you know they destroyed it. Who knows? But you know, it's all uh, it's all sticky and covered in flies. You know, yeah, you know, it had honey on it. You, you could survive if you had it in the closet there. It's they used the to throw away. They, they used to throw away all those covers, not just that book book publishers as well. So, uh, Condé Nast was famous for that. They they took James Bama, who was very famous artist he did the covers for doc savage and became a very very famous western art uh illustrator he, all of his paintings got th got thrown in, in the dumpster literally and somebody came along and started fishing out original paintings and wow. you know some of them survived but that was standard operating procedure for all of these great illustrations the record record companies and the book publishers these they didn't have the room to store them they used to throw them away they, you know, they had they had uh, negatives of them. You know, they had them sh photographed. They didn't keep the originals. Crazy. I wonder if any wound up in Chuck's closet. Uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of stuff in Chuck's closet. We're gonna find. Know, that closet's gonna open up, and everything's gonna be flying out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Paul Whitehead, man. Yeah, he did some. He did some gems. All right, Stephen. Okay, and my last choice. And I can't kind of do a reveal because he's actually on the other side of it too. This oh, is nice. Michel Granger. This is what this is. So this is Jean Michel Jean. This is Oxygen. This is Equinox, same artist. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's just an iconic piece, isn't it, really? I mean, you see this, you know exactly what it is. You still see it on t shirts now. When I saw him live a few years back, maybe as long as 10, and he played this album on all the original instruments, and they were tuning up all the wall of things at the start and everything but they used, still used all of this as imagery in, in the videos it still works really well the message that's there is as relevant now as it was back when it was released in the 70s it's just a timeless piece and i absolutely love it um what i don't love so much is mr jar's taste in jackets because they're pretty they're pretty terrible they are pretty terrible <laughs> but what's on the outside is fantastic i absolutely adore this piece of artwork it's phenomenal <laughs> <That's nice>. Chuck, <laughs> oh, my number one. Cool. Ah, nice. Tools lateralist. Mm -hmm. uh, what's up? The original um CD, which has like the um, it's like sort with like an X-ray version of this and so, which hides everything over here and so um, just makes it even more mysterious. Great album. And a fantastic album cover. Tools, um, third album, studio album, Lateralist. That's my favorite, one of my favorite albums, covers of all time. Nice. Good choice. Mm -hmm. Good choice. Eric. So, Pete, you had Kansas, and I was going through my Kansas stuff, um, thinking I was going to pick something old. I'm going with the absence of presence. Oh yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love that album cover. Um Denise de la Cerda, and I looked her up and it I don't probably didn't do enough research. It almost looks like she does a lot of tattoo art. Um 
obviously this was out there and a few other things, but every time I looked up her name, there was a million pictures of tattoos and everything else. So I'm thinking uh, she's a tattoo artist, but I did the same thing. I was looking at Point of No Return and I was looking at Left Overture and I'm like, this one for me is just fantastic. And like you said, it's nice that it has that little gatefold to open up, but I think that's a terrific album cover. That's so that's a little great idea. on your chest. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not good with paint, so that's that's not going to happen. Good choice. That's a nice pick, Ken. What do you got? Okay. Well, these aren't real. I'm not showing these off in any particular order other than the Giger. Uh This is a beautiful cover from the Spanish band Gothique. Oh yeah. Ah. And, uh, if you're familiar with the album Escenas, this was. This was their first album. They wound up releasing an unreleased second album many, many decades later. It was also quite good. But uh, this one really kind of fit the music. They were basically like the Spanish version of Camel. And uh, great, great instrumental music. And a beautiful wraparound cover. And it really conveys the, the feel of the album. Very, has a like a very pastoral feel. If, if you're, if you like, like the snow goose, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, go That's what they remind me of. Mm -hmm. Be right up your alley. You okay with all those birds on that cover, Ken? You, are you shaking? Yeah, it they're all? not real. You know, I don't have a. You know. <laughs> so, I, 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 I tell myself they're not real. So, <laughs> Pete, Pete, we're going to be doing even tomorrow. so. He wouldn't. He wouldn't post that on his wall or frame it yeah. on his wall. Right? <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't. You know, I don't buy paintings that have birds in them. That's really not surprising. <laughs> I believe it. Are we going to do some honorable mentions later? Uh, we'll just quickly some honorable mentions, yeah. Because yeah. I got a bench. All right, Chad, what do you got for your final pick? All right, my number one has been taken, but I had to leave it there, and that is Relayer. Uh, it's just a phenomenal cover. I mean, you guys have already really talked about it. I have a print of this in the other room signed to me from Roger, so it's sort of a, a prized possess possession as well. I mean, the album's great. The artwork's great. Um, not much else to say about it, but it's just a phenomenal cover. Got to be my favorite of all time. It's a great one. Dad, what was your favorite Nearfest logo that he did for you? Oh, uh, well, he did all but the first. Well, no, I guess he did. Oh, he did uh, oh nine and ten, and he didn't do the. He did not do the first two. Okay. Um, I really, I don't know. I really like the gecko. Um, that was cool. That was oh three. Gecko was 03. Those okay. were the purple and green shirts, which, yep. which was bold, but that was fun. Um, I really thought the moth was really cool for 02. I really enjoyed, I really liked that one. Um, you know, we got the double dragon in 08, which is, you know, sort of, you know, it's Prague. You got to have a dragon at some point. So we had the two with the cross tails to make it like a 10. So we got a little clever with that. Um, and honestly, I love the, the last two that we had, but we had, the Exploding Planet, sort of the sequel to Fragile. It actually ended up on the deluxe version of Fragile on the inside. Um, that and then Mark Wilkinson's Exploding Planet, so they're related. But um, I might go with the Gecko because I stole that with permission uh, for the Nearfest Records logo. So I would probably have to say the Gecko. Okay. Cool. George. Oh. Yoannis, Fate's Warning. Yeah. Awaken the Guardian. Mm -hmm. This thing, man. I don't know how many times I stared at this when I was listening to this. This sucks you in. You just, you, a lot of the lyrics are kind of not directly related to it, maybe, but definitely takes you on that trip. And Yoannis is just great. I like Spectre Within, too, but this is a little more involved, a little more of a, a big landscape piece. But uh, I would love to have a print of this. I'm sure it's vocal fucking bucks, but oh yeah, yeah, that's badass. Great colors. When I had him on the channel, he asked me, he's like, "What's your favorite uh, piece of art from me?" And I'm like, "Without question, Awaken the Guardian." I don't even have to think twice about it. That's just yeah, it's so good, so good, good choice, Anthony. Uh, my number one is I've always been kind of this has been one of my all time favorite covers. That's why I have it at number one, but. Uh, it's just so beautiful, majestic. 
uh, the suite kind of embodies it. It's just so ethereal and 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 sublime, and just it's just beautiful. It's just this beautiful scenery. It's just it kind of embodies P Pony's playing. He's just his his violin playing is just so beautiful. So that's my number one, Mystical Avengers. That that suite just kind of embodies the whole art of this this cover. John Luke Ponty, Mystical Adventures. Thank you, because I was about to ask. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I knew we were going to get some people like, I can't see it. What is that? <laughs> can, can you, is it? Was it because of the light? No, no take it, it out it, of the it, plastic it, sleeve. Yeah, it's just no, because I don't know what that is. <laughs> hey, that's a little, a little better. Well, there you go. I've never seen that in my life before, Anthony. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought George would be impressed. George and Asher. It's a cool one. Yep. All right, my number one, I'm double dipping today. Uh, my number one is an album I'm not even overly in love with, but to me, the cover is one of the greats of all time. Oh, That's yeah. Papa I Gabriel. love the album. Yeah. I love the album. Mm -hmm. Chuck, there are some days that I do, most days I'm kind of <laughs> like, it's okay. Um, I like parts <laughs> of it. I, I really like parts of it, actually. But I have I've to heard on the latest the tour... They're, they've condensed all four pieces down to a one 20 minute piece. No, like they can do 50 minutes from each. That's kind of interesting. Now, I don't want to hear this band play it, but that sounds cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah exactly. Well, but yeah, Tales from Top of the Oceans to me is one of Roger Dean's finest hours. I love Relayer too. I always go back and forth between the two of them. But yeah, this is amazing. It's just so cool. And uh, yeah, that's it. Um, all right, who's got honorables? Uh, Chris, you got any honorables? Yeah, I got a few. Yeah. Um, a few that I don't own and one that I do. Um, Metro Mania by Eloy. Oh, yeah. I like it. Mm -hmm. um, Charge by Paladin. Another Roger Dean. Um, mm -hmm. That's the one with the horse. You can't buy that album. It's crazy. Crazy. And uh, Cactus Choir by David Greenslade. That's oh, yeah. That's a good one, too. Yep. And then this one, which I own. Remember the future. Oh, yeah. By yeah, you know, we got Nectar, Nectar guy from uh, Tab in the Ocean here, but you don't get to see his little non-penis hole thing that that's <laughs> going on. That freaks me out. But it, he comes <laughs> here because he's he's modest. But those are mine. Cool. Steven. If if I show the penis quota, this would appear to be it. But okay, right. So <laughs> what I mentions are I'm going to go for. The oh, Sean yeah. Sonic experience. I like a gimmick. I like a gimmick. I like a gimmick. Okay. I, I also like the fact that you can turn it around and it does something similar on the back. That is by Peter John de Villiers. Like that a lot. I needed to mention something by Arjun Lucasen because most of his albums have got fantastic. Oh, okay, so I've gone for Universal Migrator uh, Part One uh, by Jeff Bertels. Totally different. I've gone for the debut from Flying Colors. Really like that cover. It's, it's just simple, but it kind of conveys an awful lot of what the album's about, to be honest with you. I don't even know who it's by, but I really like it. Uh, Who's Palace, that? Again, we are who we are. I really like this. is just quite odd and unsettling. Okay. Really cool. <laughs> like that a lot. That's by Anton Semenov. I'm going to give Mr. Wilkinson, another mention. This is Fish's debut, Vigil in a Wilderness of Mirrors. Mm -hmm. The cover's cool. Mm -hmm. Gatefold's fantastic. Unfortunately, yeah. the detail is so, so much detail in here. There's art, and there's collage, there's everything going on. It conveys lyrics to the whole album. There's bits of everything in there. I adore that. And for the last one, Pete knows I love it when a band are quite consistent. And they stick with an idea. And I like what Lunatic Soul do, do, you know, because they got a really cool idea. And what they do is they stick with the idea. And I just like it when a band has the conviction to continue to go through the catalogue and give you the same ideas in different ways. There's different artists and different ideas here, but it's all the same shape conveyed in different ways. And I think that it would be fair to suggest that the album art all conveys the difference in the music between the albums, because although it's all Barry Studio from Riverside, there is quite a lot of difference between each of the albums sound-wise, and although there's still a connection between all the art, they are equally different. And I just love that right across the catalogue. I think it's brave. I think it's really clever when a band can do it well. That's me. Cool. Chuck? 
This one. Nectar's down to earth. Oh, that's kind of quirky, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> very weird cover. Mm -hmm. Very, very weird cover. Um, what's a stranger album? Or perhaps the most strangest of their entire collection. And so just this one album. That's my I would argue opinion. that that cover shot perfectly lets you know what you're going to be in store for. What you're gonna... <laughs> exactly. Like the electric man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, nice. Eric. All right. Ken, I'm going to kiss up to you a little bit here. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like that cover. Um, we didn't what... have, you know, we didn't have cover art. That was the band's logo. And that's the only thing they had, so we just made a cover out of it. Oh, I, I always liked that. I thought that was yeah. very cool. Yeah. Um, Wobbler. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I love that. that. Someone brought Michael him. Bennett. It's Michael Bennett. I don't know. If, yeah, I don't know. Obviously, not the best picture, but I thought that that's awesome. And I'm going to jump on the color bandwagon since everyone else is talking about colors. I always dug that. There's nothing really to it, but mm -hmm. the colors I thought were cool in that one. So those are my three. Cool. Ken. I got a bunch, as you would expect. No way. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> From hypnosis. Mm -hmm. Chad, do you see a theme developing here? Uh, we know it was coming. No, uh, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I can never tell what, you know, is it going in her mouth or is it coming out of her mouth? So well, she's getting a drink of water. That's all I see. <laughs> 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 Don't forget to say who the album is. Steven's hmm? never coming back. Don't forget to say Next who the, al the, al <laughs> the album is. Next one from Caravan in the land of gray and pink. Yeah, yeah that's mm -hmm. a good one. The artist was Anne Marie Anderson. I never, never knew who she was, but very nice. Great artist, British. Uh, actually, was a photographer, graphic designer. Uh, Marcus Keefe went by the name of Keefe. And well, we have the vertigo thing stuck in there. But he did that. He did Cressida, Asylum, one of the great covers, Manfred Mann, Man Manfred Mann's chapter chapter three, which was chapter two. Uh he did spring. I mean Keith did tons and tons of work at affinity. And he <laughs> used to, he used to use infrared film. Next guy. Maddie Clarwin that we mentioned before. So Maddie did Bitches Brew. Ugh, mm -hmm. This thing up and out, killing it. Mm -hmm. I think, I think this was his best cover. For me. cover. And and to be honest, I was not a huge fan of a Braxis cover. Uh, to me, Love it. to me, it almost looks like a collage of photographs. But this to me is better. And here's another Maddie Clarwin piece. It's a jazz album, but I don't give a shit. I'm showing it to you because it's a great cover from Jackie McLean, mm -hmm. Demon's Dance. This is one of his beautiful. That's a good, that's an excellent album. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it just actually just got reissued again on vinyl. Mm -hmm. And let's see what else I got. Uh, this is a German hard rock band from the early '70s. Got a little, made a little prog move here and there, a little psych here and there. The Shin. Oh, yeah. I'm selling these, so that's why it's in the plastic, so I'm sorry. but I don't, It's a good, it's I don't, a good album, actually. Yeah, I, I don't know why, but I never owned an original. <laughs> uh, German artist Urs Amen, he did uh, the cover for Klaus Schultz, Time Wind. And he actually, they reissued some of the early Schultz albums and that Urs Amen redo the artwork. He did Black Dance. Now, here I had to be very careful because I don't want to get us booted off the off the uh, off of YouTube. So I have two albums by a really fucked up but great progressive jazz rock band from Denmark called Doctor Dopo Jam, mm -hmm. and I was very careful with my post its. <laughs> we have the Entree album, and then we have. Fat dogs and Danishmen. <laughs> dare I remove them, Pete? 
<laughs> leave them on. Leave them on. Hey, oh boy. Leave them on. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Yeah, you never know them and stuck in them all right? day. So, and that's that's what I have. I mean, there's tons more, but you know. oh yeah, okay. cool. All right, Chad, you got any left? Yeah, I got a few. Um, one of my favorites from Roger Dean was the ABWH cover. Yeah, it's good. I just thought I think it was called Blue Desert. I just thought that's that's again yeah. great colors. You got the eagle down on the bottom. You got the pillars. Just really cool cover. Um, say what you want about this band, this next one, but I always thought this cover was great. Rodney Matthews, Aegis Aqua, yep. uh, the big sp space whale, and uh, the dolphins with the long with the, with the uh, the long fins and tail and tail and the, the ring planet in the background. It's just a really cool. Um, you know, it's a space ocean kind of thing. I just always thought it was a really cool image. Rodney's um, amazing. Yeah, I almost picked a Magnum album, but I was like, ah, it's not yeah. really prog. But I yeah, I was exactly the same. <laughs> He's so good. <laughs> um, another one, go to Poland. I always thought this was pretty striking. This collage is Moonshine. Yeah. I love that. It's by Bekshinsky. Yeah. Bekshinsky is yours. <clears throat> I, I have, I, I, I don't know if you ever saw it in my house, Chad. I have an original Bekshinsky painting. Uh, I'm not sure I would. No, I'm not so sure I saw it. Okay, yeah. I'll show it to it's you. A, it's okay. a rather so, it's rather large. Could I have well, it? It's, a, it's in my closet now. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my painting is in your closet. Or... Every time you can't find something, it's in your closet. I know where it is now. That's right. Yeah, I always thought this was striking with the deep mm -hmm. greens and then that bright red. I don't know if it's like a, a robe or whatever uh, draped over the chair arm. Mm -hmm. Um, we talked about uh, Silent Cry to the Mighty Echoes. Ken, this is for you. Gotta love Tarkus. That was Neil, that, right? William the, Neil. The Armadillo Tank is just the best. William Neal, I think, was the artist. Um, a more recent IQ album. This one's striking is Resistance. Yeah. It's always, I just thought that was a really, really cool cover. Um, Pete, you mentioned this very quickly earlier. Going to go back to the whale theme. Mastodon Leviathan. That's just an incredible painting. My my friend Paul Romano painted that. He's really? a Philadelphia artist. Yeah. And uh Arch Enemy Arts in Philadelphia had the original hanging on the wall for a long time. It's wow. huge, it's huge piece. It's insane. It's beautiful. Yeah, did a lot of stuff for a lot of bands on relapse records for a number of years. Yeah, I have some I have original some original work from Paul. He's great. Nice yeah, guy. Yeah. And then my final one is more it's it's the gatefold from this album. Even though I like the simplicity of the cover for Russia's Hold Your Fire, I always thought this gatefold was really cool. Oh, yeah. The guy juggling the mm -hmm. fireballs in the street scene, mm -hmm. a couple secret things, re rush references in there, like the clock is at 9 12, being 21 12. Um, uh, you know, a couple other things, uh, sneaky things in there, but just a really cool street painting. Stephen, a little bit of your, you know, the dark lighting in the streets, not quite the dr dr drama that the uh, um, artist that you showed has, but sort of that same feeling or using the light to bring out the, the image. So I always thought that was really, really cool. cool. And that's it. Is that Hugh's son? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. George, you got any left? Uh, just a few. A repeat, Pete had. Mm -hmm. By night, I always thought that was cool. I like how pissed the owl looks. He's really angry. <laughs> Another psychotic waltz. Bleeding. That's pretty damn cool. That's my favorite. Yeah. Uh, trying to cur curry favor with Eric for this one. Planet X, Quantum. Nice colors. Yeah. yeah. I thought about that one too. That's what I got. And a good Holdsworth. And I want to repeat the one that Chad showed, uh, the green one with the recent album. I, I can't remember the name of that band. I was trying to remember it. Which one? Oh, amorphous uh, androgynous. This one. Yeah, that. That's so good. <laughs> Very good representation now. <laughs> Asher likes it too. <laughs> A little catnip on your camera there, you know. It's like, <laughs> Anthony, you got any left? Uh, yeah, I have, I have one and another one. Ken, do you have um, uh, Babe Ruth first base on album? No, oh, that's a that's a cool. Have you ever seen that? It's a cool Roger Dean cover where they're yeah. playing baseball out in space. Mm -hmm. I always thought yeah. that was really cool. And then, fellas, get ready to drink. 
I don't know why I've always thought this cover was iconic. Washing the hands, the wristwatch on the sink, probably coming home from work from a long day, and he wants to listen to some Eddie Jobson. So, danger money. (laughs) Play these hands with that dirty danger. Uh, Christian, you should have had yourself a bottle of liquor there, man. <laughs> oh man! All right, I don't have—I don't really have any honorables because I started thinking about it. I'm like, I could have—I could have had like a million of them. Your but... shirt, <laughs> your shirt. I could have mm-hmm. picked—I could have picked a bunch of Genesis ones. I was thinking, mm-hmm. uh, Star Castle Fountains of Light is a really cool album cover as well. And yeah, there's just there's so many of them, so many. Of them. But a lot of a lot I know of want to say that. Yeah, I know, I know. There's a lot that you guys picked that I would have—I would have picked as well. But uh, yeah, there's just so many good ones. So uh, before we let everybody go, we're going to find out what the next album study is going to be. So for the reveal, I will turn it over to Chuck. All right. Um, I had four albums um, that I was going to pick from. One was going to be this one over here, but I decided against that. I wanted to do something that I know that most people here will probably like. Uh, um, the album pick for um, next uh, our next um, study album study is going to be Brand X's Unded- Unorthodox Behavior. Ooh. Nice. All right. So that's what I'm going to go with. I wanted to go for a nice safe pick, you know. Wow. So I know that this is an album that most people like over here and so. And, you know, there'd be no excuses from our Mr. Yellow Hoodie over there. <laughs> <laughs> so you should be able to make this one. Yeah, I'll so, be on. Mm-hmm. That's a great pick. I, I think even mm-hmm. the Nectar would have been a great pick, too. They're both- mm-hmm. Chuck, I got to tell you, man, it was even money. It was going to be Ultra Ultravox Vienna. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> No, you know, like, that's not not prog enough, man. <laughs> I would say I say Rage and Eden, yes, but no, but Ultravox, no. Mm-mm, not Chuck, that, is this that. your apology for Pro Iron? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, actually, no. I actually, <laughs> I actually was gonna go. What's if you really want to know what I really wanted to go with and so, but I'm not gonna show yeah. it. Mm, so yeah. I'm not gonna show it now nah. because I. <laughs> You Most likely you probably pick that the next time. Yeah. All right. There you go. All right. Sounds <laughs> well, I think Brand X unorthodox behavior is a great mm-hmm. pick. So for everybody watching, that is what we will be blah, that is what we will be discussing two weeks from tonight. So stay tuned for that. And uh visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube all together. All the damn all time. The damn damn time. time. Let us know what some of your favorite album covers are that weren't mentioned tonight down there in the comments below. And uh, I do want to thank Mr. Canzanari for coming by all the way from the Hudson Valley Squares to join us tonight. Hey, mm. Pleasure was all mine. Thanks for letting me mm. crash. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So uh for uh George Lemay, Chris Canzanari, Eric Porter. Chad Hutchinson, Anthony Farrar, Stephen Reed, the professor of Prague himself, Ken Golden, and Chuck Alvarez, IMP Pardo. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you in two weeks for Brand X. Till then, have a good one. Bye-bye. Good night, everyone.